for the Dodgers on the road in PNC Park yesterday in Pittsburgh on Skeens Day number five in Major League Baseball history. And Paul Skeens and his Buckos booked as a favorite knocked off the L.A. Dodgers by a final score of 10-6. to Pittsburgh winning as a favorite. They have been abysmal there this year, now just 9-14 and straight up. Just the third game for L.A. as an underdog, and they falter 10-6. to Donnie also gave you Pittsburgh in the first five. They did have that first five lead, I believe 7-3 to by those five innings coming to a close. Yeah, it wasn't a surprise that we had Pittsburgh there up at the end of five innings. The surprise was they got those seven runs in the bottom of the second, basically icing out that first five, which was great. And was one of those where it got a little bit tighter late in that baseball game, but the Pirates were better all the way through. And you take a look at Skeens on the mound. Who knows where he goes from here, but it's certainly fun every single time he takes the mound. A lot of Ks and a lot of excitement. That's what we love in baseball. So we have a lot to get to now here in this opening hour of the early line on a Thursday on the opening night of the NBA Finals with some breaking news in the association. Find out next. Skeens day number five for the Pittsburgh Pirates was another success. Pittsburgh, a favorite against the L.A. Dodgers, which has not happened often. The Dodgers just an underdog for the third time in 63 games this season. And the odds makers and Mr. Right side we're correct. Mm. Paul Skeens dealt once again yesterday, DRS, and now in his five career Major League Baseball starts. Skeens is a perfect 3-0. and The Pirates have won four of his five starts. He is a 3 0 ERA in 27 innings of work in 38 total Ks in only five outings. In fact, in four of the five, each game that Pittsburgh has won with Skeens getting the start, he has recorded at least seven strikeouts, as we saw yesterday, eight Ks against the L.A. Dodgers. Paul Skeens, the number one overall pick, of this past summer's draft in 2023 is every bit the real deal. Yeah, he's a really good pitcher. And also, you have to keep in mind, too, power arm there. Most of the teams haven't seen him just yet. And yesterday, look, he did have success. Five innings pitched, three earned runs. But that's not as if we're talking about a guy that's going into the eighth inning here, only giving up one hit to the Dodgers lineup, who actually didn't even score the night before. It's a solid outing and something that you can build on. I'm interesting to see, once the other teams do get a look at him, what that adjustment period is going to be. Because the one thing we do understand is he's going to get a lot of strikeouts, no doubt about it. And also, like Pittsburgh, who really babied him in the minor leagues, not letting him pitch all that much, letting him pitch into the 90s right away, 90 pitches, I should say, into his career. But also handicapping the game yesterday. You sort of saw this playing out. You knew he's going to be thrown between 90 to 100 pitches, but typically with a strikeout guy, you're going to throw those pitches a lot early. Like, very few innings Paul Skeens is going to have, like, you know, nine pitches or six pitches or five pitches there because he's looking to make contact. He's a strikeout guy, so that left the sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth open, which is what I want to avoid. But also, having said that, he got to a seven to nothing lead. You're supposed to win the game and the first five innings with relative ease. But let's just say Paxton wasn't on the mound yesterday. Who knows? The Dodgers scoring six runs. They probably end up winning that game over the Pirates, but he didn't. And the Pirates were supposed to hit, and they did. And Skeens pitched fairly well against one of the better lineups in Major League Baseball. Yeah, he pitched very, very well, I would say. In great moments yesterday, the battle with Shohei Otani and Shohei's first at-bat, striking him out, blowing him away with three straight pitches that were north of 100 miles per hour for Otani to recollect in the third inning a deep shot to straightaway center for Otani and a home run. But ultimately, Pittsburgh gets the better of L.A. The Pirates got the better of the starter yesterday for the Dodgers in James Paxton. Now, as we look at the National League Rookie of the Year odds, Shota Iminaga has also been incredible this year for Chicago and remains the favorite. Donnie, do you think there will be a time throughout this Major League Baseball season that Skeens overtakes Iminaga to be that favorite to win NL Rookie of the Year? I do. I actually do. Because the one thing we know about Imanaga, yes, he's a very good pitcher, but we like electric stuff here. And what gets the edge? What leads off Sports Center and also on the Sports Grid Network when we start to talk about it? We're not talking about Imanaga's. Like, oh, what another great performance. Today, we went right to Skeens. Yesterday, all we were doing was handicapping this game because of how much fun it was going to be. Not because the Dodgers were good, but what we would get out of Paul Skeens. You take a look at the strikeout numbers. He has a chance, literally, to get close to 10 strikeouts every single time he takes the yeah. mound. And that's going to get a lot of highlights here. He's three all already and he's playing for a Pittsburgh Pirates team that isn't all that great and hovering around 500. Let's just say he runs that number to 7-0 and with an average strikeout margin of between 8 to 11 per game. He's going to close that gap on Imanaga and a lot of people would just say yeah. they like the sizzle to go along with their steak as I like to say and Skeens sure. gives you that. 
there is a lot more notoriety, fair or unfair, on yeah. Paul Skeens because of maybe who he is in a relationship with and just being the number one overall pick with absolutely electric stuff. And these are narrative awards throughout Major League Baseball. By the way, just quickly here, Jared Jones, fifth best price on that list at 20 to 1. Also a rookie right-hander. Yeah for the Pittsburgh Pirates blank the Dodgers in shutout work in the opening game in Pittsburgh. The Dodgers have dropped two straight inside PNC Park. Elsewhere in the Commonwealth yesterday in the state of Pennsylvania, we go to Philadelphia where the Phils blank the Brewers, winning 2-0 to complete the sweep over Milwaukee. Aaron Nola, not a rookie, but darn good yesterday for the Phils as they win all three games in this set against Milwaukee, who entered this week in Philadelphia, riding a five-game win streak. Nick Castellanos, home half of the fifth, a two-run shot. The only scoring we saw yesterday, the Phillies complete the sweep with a 2-0 win in the finale. Yeah, Castellanos moves up into that two-hole because JT Ramuto wasn't available in that lineup. 214 now in the season, which isn't great, and only one hit yesterday, but it was the biggest hit of the game. So if you're going to be on that Kyle Schwarber plan, like, yeah, I'll hit around 200, but get some clutch hits in here. That's what Castellanos did yesterday. But also, let's keep in mind the embarrassment and riches that the Philadelphia Phillies have. Wheeler, Nola. Yeah, Nola goes out, seven innings pitch, no earned runs, five Ks, no walks. ERA right now at 2.77. And even that bullpen, which is smoking hot right now, Hoffman on the season, comes in yesterday. Yesterday, throws one inning he's at a 0.98 ERA everything is clicking for the Phillies and the sign of a really good baseball team is what do we usually think of the Phillies when they play home in warm weather conditions at Citizens Bank Park oh look at that the fighting Phils in a small ballpark six seven runs yeah that's what they're supposed to do when the Phillies are winning games two to nothing over quality opponents and getting dominant starting pitching you know the hitting is going to come around as well 44 yeah. 19 on the season and finally getting the respect maybe of the betting public because hey look at that the Phillies Phillies aren't playing bottom feeders. They're sweeping teams in first place. It's time to start putting some respect on that Phillies name. All three games in this series featured a combined nine total runs. It was a low scoring affair all week long in Milwaukee or in Philadelphia, mm -hmm. rather with Milwaukee And the Brewers had the highest over percentage in the bigs entering this week. So Philadelphia, 44 and 19 44 wins tied for the most in major league baseball because the yankees keep winning as well make that seven straight victories for new york five straight wins this season over the minnesota twins the yankees really do have the twins number with a nine to five win yesterday up in the bronx at yankee stadium yeah, the Yanks are on a machine right now. Maybe you are getting a preview on a night-to-night -night basis where the Phillies and the Yankees can repeat what they did in 2009 where the Yankees got the best of the Philadelphia Phillies in the World Series. They've been great from all accounts. And also, you just get back to the big guys in that lineup, the Stantons and the Judges, just performing so yeah. well, which lifts everybody on that roster. And if we are looking at Aaron Judge with a chance, again, to say this, if Aaron Judge hits 300 on the season, I can't imagine what his final tally is going to be with RBI and also with home runs here because, again, we're just getting started in the summer months. We're going to get those hot temperatures in that small ballpark here. I love everything the Yankees are doing, and certainly I think they're far and away, once again, the best team in the American League. A sign of the times, perhaps, for how great this season has been and the turnaround for Aaron Judge in the last month. He had one base knock yesterday yeah. in five RBIs. A bases yep. clearing triple <laughs> midway through that Crazy. baseball game, but grounded out in the first, recorded an RBI. With the bases juiced, he was walked, and it led to an RBI as well. The Yankees victorious 9-5, to five, longest active win streak, currently in the bigs at seven straight victories now we go to houston where the fork had been away for most of this week but donnie yeah. just opened up the drawer and he's grabbing that finest silverware that he Good can base. find because the cardinals avoid the sweep yesterday in h-town against the astros with a four to two victory for st louis really back and forth game each team scoring twice in the fifth inning but nolan arenado a solo shot in the sixth it was the insurance run that st louis needed the cardinals avoid the sweep yeah, Michaelis was good. Six innings pitched, two earned runs yesterday. Only three Ks did give up the two home runs. But how about this? Six innings, Ben, 62 total pitches, and they pulled him out of the game, handed over to the bullpen, which solidified the rest of that game. But also, St. Louis, I do think they're eventually going to be a player in the Central Division. I'm just done with the Houston Astros. And also, Ben, sometimes you say, who's coming back to your team midseason? 
the Astros seem like they're losing guys on a day-to-day basis from the front end rotation yeah. and or players. We know it doesn't end well. And just to get back to those old Madden terms, just because you're injured in your starting lineup here for the Houston Astros doesn't mean like, oh, they had their two injuries. They're done for the rest of the way. Just turn them off. That's not going to happen. You'll get more attrition as you go. The Houston Astros, 28 and 35. I don't think we can rescue them at this point now. Ryan Helsley, by the way, back end of the bullpen for the Redbirds. Their closer, his 20th save of the season yesterday that leads all of Major League Baseball.